us off. What is what is your breakdown? What is your prediction? And I want to go with the with with the um two with the co-main and the main events. And we can start with just the first card. We could just do um we could just start with the first card with uh just tell us the name. But, yeah, we we don't got time to break down all of these today, Rob. You're going to have to do like <laughs> we need the two the two we charlos. Need the okay. two charlos. We need, we, we need predictions Darren though. Chanko. No this disrespect to the 135s. I'm sorry. I'm not Rob. I mean, <laughs> but, but we don't got time for it all. <clears throat> all right. Break down the two charlos. Darren Chanko versus Charlo. This is at middleweight for anybody that doesn't know. This is like a good matchup. I think it's more even than people are giving it credit for. That's number one. Um, I'm going to go ahead and say that the breakdown of this fight is that they're going to start off like they're boxing, but eventually they will both get into a, a fighting type of inside game war, in my opinion. So with that being said, it's kind of hard to go against the power of Charlo when you start talking about power versus skills. So I have to go with Charlo in this situation, even though I believe that Darinchenko is not going to be the one. He, he's going to have a tough fight to get this W for sure. Um, but if they get into a firefight, I got to lean towards Charlo. And I believe that's what's going to end up happening by the end of the, you know, however many rounds, maybe like, five rounds after five rounds, maybe they're going to start firing back and forth at each other, and then it's going to be like, who the hell got the stronger punch? All right, let's go Charlo Rosario. Um, Charlo Rosario, that I am going for Rosario, guys. I am actually going for Rosario for a couple of reasons. The main reason that I am is because he just made J-Rock look like shit. He yeah. made J-Rock that made her look like shit, but also made J-Rock look so much better and such a higher class fighter look totally vulnerable. And also the second reason I'm going for Banana is because I feel like Charlo hasn't been fighting people that are exactly the same um body uh like like the same body mass and 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 like a bigger fighter like he is he's a strong middleweight fighter physically and i feel like this is going to be one of the first time that his you know he's got like a matchup for somebody that's just as tall and just as big as he is and i think that rosario has actually been given enough time in camp to really hone in on his skills and not be last minute replacements like some of his older fights. So this is a reason why I feel that we might be seeing an upset in this particular fight, guys. Yeah. I do got to mention to everyone, these are being recorded. Lucas <laughs> is going to have these scored and yes. put up on the website. Javi, your take. Let's start with, with uh, Charlo Darren Shanko. All right. So first of all, I just want to I just want to give you a shout out because you've been promoting this fight more than Showtime and the Charlos. But <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something, right? I like I like the matchups. I gotta be honest. Uh, the 160 Charlo versus Dervachenko. That's a great matchup. I'm expecting Dervachenko to get dropped within two three the first two three rounds, then come back and give all type of nightmares to Charlo. But I got Charlo on that one. And I think it's going the full distance. So I got Charlo by decision, 160. On the 154, man, I think um, Harrison already laid out the print. Uh, Charlo, 154, Charlo has already proven that when he gets taken out of his game and he, he lets his emotions get the best of him, he's not performing at his 100%. Harrison, the Tiger, got, got into him. Banana isn't going gonna, bananas are gonna to play in those mind games, but he's going to come to bring it. And when he feels that platano power, his Charlo is gonna be like, "Whoa, wait! This is something that I haven't seen." So I'm going for banana <laughs> for that one as well. But I think he's also gonna go to decision. Hopefully, Yay, Javi, you're on my side. I thought I was gonna wow. be out on the limb by myself, man. That platano power, Sakura. That platano power. Let's go. Let's go with Malachi. All right. <laughs> which Which one you gonna start with? Uh, Malachi. Either one. Either one you want to, but. 
Um, at 154, I got I got Charlo winning the fight. Um, Shakura and Javi brought up great reasons why uh, someone would take Banana. Um, now, she did talk about his victory over J-Rock after what we know now with the situation with J-Rock and Breadman. Um, I have some questions about what was going on in that camp um, because, you know, they, you know that I believe that they, they split up. So he's changed trainers from Breadman. So it was a bit shocking for me. But then when I went back through the social media and took a look at things and went back and listened to some things that, that Breadman had said, uh, it makes me wonder about um, for that fight where where J Rock was. You know, I can't speak on the, you know exactly where it was because I wasn't in the camp, but it just gives me questions. So, did he beat J Rock at his best? Did he beat the J Rock that we you know mentally or physically that we saw beating her? He seemed to gas to me in that fight. Um, I don't think Charlo's gonna gas. Uh, I, I think Charlo, as much as I like J Rock, and um. I was very hyped for that fight when, when you know, when, when they fought. Okay. Um, Charlo's on a different level skill-wise, and I got Charlo winning the fight. Um, at once, 160, I'm really excited for this fight, and I, I agree with Lucas. Um, that fight, if it was, if they weren't going to have two main events, it should be the main event, even though the other one's a unification fight, just because of the dog that uh, Devichenko is. Um, but I still think I have it. I'm like uh, 55 40. You know what I mean? Like, I'm taking Charlo, but it's so close, it's hard for me to actually pick a winner. Um, I think Charlo has the more physical abilities, he's he's got that stuff you can't teach in the gym, and I think that's what's going to pull him through. And I got him winning the fight, so uh, I, I think that he, uh, Wins a split decision. Lucas, are we going to uh, are we going to have a Charlo brother loss on the night? What are your predictions? What are your predictions? <laughs> well, um, you know, I've been wrong before, but right now for the one fifty four Charlo, um, you know, I, I like Rosario, and I think he's a great fighter, but I think he's riding a little bit high off the uh, Williams win. And maybe a little bit, like Malachi was saying, a little premature. I think, uh, you know, Charlo's not Julian Williams. And, you know, I, th I think Charlo stops him late, um, to be honest with you. He's got to get inside. I mean, he's still got, what, three inches, I think, on on J-Rock. But, uh, yeah, yeah I, I think Charlo's going to play it safe. He's going to keep him at bay. But um, it, stopping him late. Or, you know, unanimous decision for Charlo. But for the 160, that's a different story, buddy. Um, <laughs> and I am going to be riding with Um he, he definitely has the better experience. Uh, he's been in there with, with tougher opponents. Agreed. And I, I just think he's going to be careful. As, as uh, Javi pointed out, he gets knocked down early. I think he's going to take it. Easy the first couple of rounds, just try to get his footing underneath him, kind of learn from those past fights. But I think he's already fought guys bigger and better than Charlo and, and gave them hell of a fights, if not even one, depending on who you ask. Yeah. I mean, that, that fight with Golovkin, it don't really get much better than Golovkin. And I think Golovkin's leagues above Charlo, in my eyes. Um, all the experience goes to Rev Derevi and Chanko. Now, he could get screwed, but I'm going to give him a split decision victory. Can, can I? Can, so you, you right now think the Golovkin, the Golovkin that we have today is leagues above Charlo? Charlo? Yes. Maybe not today, okay. but yes, okay. Golovkin okay. overall, yes. Okay. Before All right. So. Here's my take on this. Not to say necessarily <laughs> oh that Golovkin would lose to Charlo. I'm not saying that. I'd take Charlo. You would take Charlo. Yeah, I'd take Charlo. Okay. I, I, I think I think Golovkin's on the downside of his Oh, career. I don't think there's a doubt to that. I don't think there's any doubt to that. 
right, so I, I did, I did my, dang, can I get my predictions in, y'all? Oh, I'm sorry. Government talk, man. I done, I done researched this enough today, and I'm very excited for this card, as Javi mentioned. I'm the number one promoter. So, in terms of Charlo versus Darian Shanko, okay, Darian Shanko is a slow starter. That's exactly why you guys think he might get knocked down in the first couple of rounds. Mm -hmm. Charlo, uh, the 160 Charlo is, to me, the baddest man in the division, period. I think he's, he's earned it. He's proved it time and time again. The only time that he messed up was when his mind wasn't fully in it because his brother just lost the fight previous. Okay. So I think his emotions got the best of him that night. Aside mm -hmm. from that, we've always seen him take on tough competition and knock him out. Mm -hmm. I don't think that fight is any contest. I don't think that's no contest. I think Darian Shanko is in for a rough fight. He's in for a top-notch fighter at the top of his game. And I think that he loses that badly. I think he loses that fight badly. So all you're Go saying ahead, all, all you're saying is that really the other Charlo has to lose. And then this Charlo screwed. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? No, they never experienced. They, they never time gap in between. They never, guys. they never experienced that before. And and now his brother has a loss. Now you got to understand the mentality of these guys. Listen to their interviews. We want to capture the world. Lions forever. Their whole motivation in this sport was to capture and be undefeated. Mayweather status for both of them both of them so that was like their whole life turned upside down when one brother lost because that was everything they always talked about i think in life i like, think you put more emphasis on it than maybe even they do <laughs> no i don't and, and it's documented it's documented in every interview that they've done that being said um i think that this charlo just is is a better fighter than with lucas is putting him down for it. and every time and every time this, this charlo fights he he impresses the masses because he has big time knockouts yeah. he exceeds expectation every time he's out there so i think that this is no contest for this Charlo. okay you're riding high on him okay can you give me why yeah. though why do you think that who is he knocked out that makes you think oh this this man's better than sliced bread it, well, it's all the knockouts that he's had. <laughs> <laughs> oh, the power. Now, let's not, the now, let's not mention the yeah, fact that's that... That's a good one. I like not, Thank you. Let's not mention the fact that when he beat J-Rock, he beat J-Rock at 154, which is why he had to move up in weight mm. because he, he he knocked the poop out of J-Rock. We all <laughs> see yeah, he's one, he's one he knocked him off. His, he knocked it, him yeah. off his high horse. And then all the knockouts prior to that, people didn't see him coming. They thought that the Charlos were just uh, very meticulous at that point. And then all of a sudden, this power came out of nowhere. Okay? It's every single knockout, every single victory he's had that is the reason why he's better than these other fighters out here. Look, I, I love Austin Trout, so I don't mean any disrespect, but I think he's caught the tail end of Austin Trout. And Austin Trout gave him some fits. Austin Trout was a close fight, Rob. Drevianchenko is leagues above Austin Trout right now. Austin Trout was not. Austin Trout was not a close a close fight on the on the score. The call. judges, yes, just, it was. Just to let you know, yes, it was. Oh, Check the scorecard. I'm not sure what it was, but it was a close Every fight on the scorecard. It's one sixteen, one twelve, one fifteen, one thirteen. 115, 113. 115, 113. That's a close fight. The other ones were 116, 112. The other two. That's a close fight. And Austin Trout is the type of fighter I was going to say that just basically makes yeah, it. He got, a tricky, he got a tricky style. Yeah, know. like <laughs> nobody gets from under him without a real he, big. Uh, I mean, he makes has himself he, look funny in a little bit. He's been like a lot. Most of Austin Trout's big fights have all been like controversial. You go back to Canelo. I thought Canelo. Either was way, fight, but yeah, but either way, Trout won the fight. I don't. I don't know about the present company. 
Matter of no, fact, right, you. he just but, had to fight with Gaucher before yeah. that was considered highly controversial. Yeah. So, yeah. like, everybody trials fights is just like, yeah. I mean, he just kind he of make people okay. look bad. Right, but to answer the question though here, because Toppy is not Austin Trout, just to answer your question, Lucas, we're talking about Darren Shanko. Okay. He's going to come forward. He's going to come forward. His style is made perfectly for this Charlo. And, and, and y'all would call me crazy, which is why I didn't say I was predicting a knockout. I'm actually predicting a unanimous decision. But because Darren Shanko is going to come forward through this fight, he, he's prone to get knocked out. And by I predicted this, I by did this predict chart. the knockout for that reason. I don't know. I don't know if you say he's pro to knock out. Not only by picking Derby and Chego, you guys are like, man, I don't know. He's probably getting knocked out. And I'm sitting here like, man, really? I, I, I mean, well, I as, Clara, as Clara says, three to one. Damn, Lucas, excuse me, four to one. Come on, <laughs> Lucas. And I'm like, hey. hey, hey. I, I got to run with what I say. I mean, I, I, I I'm not that far from taking it, Lucas. But, bro, you said he's pro. You're making it sound out. like it, though. No, I, I think not, everybody I, making it sound like it. I, I, I said he win a uh, Charlo win a split decision. That that dictates a close fight happening, right? Mm -hmm. But Brad, well, you said he's prone to get knocked out. But what do you, why do you say that? Because he lost a split decision to Jenny Jacobs, and his last fight with Triple G. Shoot, I came in with the fight the first time thinking he beat Triple G. So then I went back and watched it the second time, and then I thought maybe it was a draw. So every time I watch it, I might find a different winner. How, mm -hmm. what, what, how do you say he's prone to get knocked out, homie? I'm glad you asked that because Charlo is the knockout king. Charlo is the top of his division. So he's prone <laughs> to get knocked out because he's facing Charlo. So you think Charlo's a, a oh bigger puncher at 160 than Danny Jacobs or Triple G? Absolutely. You I think he's more athletic. It. You about to see it on Saturday night? You've been smoking that glaucoma medication, <laughs> huh? We're about to see it on Saturday night. This is going to be one of those on moments. This. I actually, I agree with Rob on this. I told you, I think if they start exchanging the way that Darren mm. Tinko exchanged with Triple G, we're going to see some fireworks for real. So, and Sakura, I, you I, think also that Charlo's got more power than either of those guys? What, then Charlo? I mean, then who? The, then G, then Glubkin and Jacobs. At this moment in time, yes. Maybe like four years ago, no, Triple G. But like Malachi saying, he's on the decline now. Because he should have been able to knock Derenchenko out during that fight at some point, right? If he was uh, old Triple G. He's not that anymore. So I'm going off what I saw in their fight and establishing the fact that both of them were fighting inside game that night. And they were swinging at each other. Mm -hmm. He was there to be hit. And I'm saying, if he goes with that same style in this Charlo fight, I'm with Rob where it's perfect. It's perfect for him. I mean, he loves a good catch and shoot, first of all. Charlo does. See, like, that's his go-to punch for people. See, now, Gol everybody thinks Golovkin's on the slide, and I think there is kind of no doubt that he is. But I, as far as how far he's diminished, I think that's tarnished. Because if you look at back, I mean, yeah, he... He kind of let Steve Rolls hang around a little too long, but he knocked him out. Um, but the the fight, only fight he really lost recently, you're talking, you know, Alvarez. And, you know, that's debatable. But Drivianchenko steps in. He had close fights. So just because he actually had this close fight with Drivianchenko, people are like, oh, Golovkin's washed up. He's, he's, he's so much he on the slide. Now, no, you're me. saying he should have been able to knock, knock out Drevianchenko, but yes, Drevianchenko doesn't have. He has not been knocked out. He has not been stopped. We have had people on the show that told us that they were just sparring with Triple G and they felt his power like nobody else. Finley, that yeah. That is not what the hell we saw in the Darinchenko fight. Hey, some people are tough. He can't knock oh, out everybody. Tough. Can I break down okay. this other fight? That's now, all please? I'm saying. That's all I'm saying. My internal skill can level I, is get... also better, I believe, than Darren Chenko's. We gonna see. Uh, Clarence says, "Lucas, love you, brother." Five to one. Lions only. Laughing face. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank you so much. I got I no problem with being alone. I got no problem. <laughs> yeah, can I break down this other fight, please? 
before we all have to go to bed? Can I bring that? Go ahead, Rob. Fight? I relinquish it back to you. Well, I didn't hear Malachi's <laughs> prediction for um, the banana and Charlo fight. I don't think. Charlo. He picked Charlo Malachi and Charlo. Charlo. And Charlo okay. and Charlo. So, this other fight I love. This uh, Jamar Charlo versus uh, Jason Rosario. I absolutely love this fight. Just to give you a little breakdown here on it. Rosario's 21-1. and one, Avenged his only draw that he had. He also has 14 KOs. Last KO was a big fifth round TKO of Jimmy J. Rock Williams, which was a, a very nice fight for him. This guy comes and he has very clean, effective punching. His punches are very effective, very clean. And he also has power in the division as well. Then you look at this Charlo Brett, who is 33 and 1, but Avenged is only lost to a late TKO. Although he only has 17 KOs in 33 fights, I believe he's lost a little of his power as he moved his uh, competition level up. And, and not only that, I also think that this Charlo's main issue is, is that he doesn't want to take risks. He doesn't try to go out to take risks. And then when he's being pressured, he gets hit a lot more than he should when being pressured. All those things right there are big issues for me with this Charlo brother because those things are what Rosario actually has going for him. But you know what Rosario doesn't have going for him, y'all? The big fights, the big main event, the big pay-per-view status. This Charlo, like I said, their whole world is to be undefeated. That's gone. That pressure is all gone away. This Charlo is actually going to come out and prove to everybody that Jason Rosario is a good fighter, but he's not an elite fighter. That title belongs to both Charlo brothers this night. So what happens if it doesn't go that way? Then Javi, I'll shave my beard, okay? <laughs> Ooh, I want to see this. He might be handsome. I'm going to tell you something. Uh, Rosario they gonna let you in uh, high school again, Rob. <laughs> <laughs> so listen. That being said, that's the breakdown in the predictions. We are keeping score. I gotta hear what Javier was about to say about yeah, it. Yeah, sorry, Javier. Okay, yo. No, no, it's so good. I would just say like uh, Charlo got you know he he got touched. He got attacked a few times with against Harrison. Now Rosario has more power than Harrison. So he's gonna be way more affected, and you know, style makes styles makes fights. So even though we've seen Charlo look good against certain fighters, that doesn't necessarily mean that he's gonna look good against you know Rosario. Now, hey. sometimes when you're a technical top elite fighter, you look good because you you you're so you so top and elite that you're you see what's coming, you see the technique, you see the fundamentals. But when you see, when you see somebody that's unorthodox. There's somebody that doesn't really, you know, doesn't follow boxing by the book, and he comes with different awkward style, it gives him more trouble, and that's Rosario. He's really awkward, he has the power, and like Sakura said, they he's not outmatched when it comes to size, height, power. They right there, like toe to toe. So it is gonna be a good fight. I just think Rosario, if Rosario connects, <laughs> it's gonna be it, it, you know, Charlo never been touched like that. Let's yep. not, and I appreciate your break. Let's not forget these pay-per-views, man. This is pressure. You're looking at these brothers to hold this pay-per-view. That's pressure, man. That is true. Yeah. Now, now I just have one question for all of you guys. I just got one question for all of you guys. Especially <laughs> Look at Rob's case. <laughs> <laughs> Go ahead. Go ahead. And Rob, because since you don't want you don't you guys to said it, you're not gonna you know buy the pay-per-view. If in in an in, in imaginary world, if you have to choose. Right, it's, it's it's on the same night, on the same price, but you can only choose one, right? And you have to buy which pay per view would you buy, the Charlos or Lomachenko versus Lopez? I mean, I mean, yeah, man. Man. you already know. I'm, I'm no. Loma. 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 No, absolutely, absolutely not. It Loma. depends on what you bring in. It depends on what you're bringing on that undercard. 
this undercard is solid. No, nope. they have five don't even matter. <laughs> it does. I'm gonna tell you what. They have five championship fights on this undercard. Each of these guys on the card are all veteran style, not veteran, but they're big they're fighters. They all got <laughs> huge records and huge resumes Rob, on, their, on their shoulders. Rob, no, I'm not done. You, you, you are done because shit. you have no. spent eight years of my life saying 135 and below are nothing, and now you're mm-hmm. saying, hey, everybody, this is a selling point. No, you, <laughs> it's invalid. It's invalid. <laughs> it's invalid. It's invalid. I'm not done. I'm not done. Uh, we gotta go. Come on. <laughs> you, you just said you just said on my show. You just said anything below 130 don't matter. Did you forget that? <laughs> <laughs> what is oh, it? He's no, no, no. What? <laughs> You know what? what is he, he be going what back and forth. Under, like one day yo, he deletes it, the next day he does it. I know. Yeah, he won the debate. <laughs> and he he sent me a message saying we got a debate. I already won the debate right here. I just pull up your, your <laughs> you you talking. Father God, I tell you what. I tell you what. I think oh, I think that one thirty five and under it doesn't matter for him. But if he's paying for it, then he does matter. <laughs> <laughs> he's Only if they're it. champs. <laughs> Only if they're champs. Well, let's, let's keep it going, on. bro. <laughs> We're moving oh, on. Man. Shakur, do you have your tweet of the week, darling? I like almost forgot about my tweet of the week. I don't even know what it was at this point, Lucas. <laughs> I, we can, we can, we can skip it. No, we can okay. skip. It. I got it.